Hello, my name is Woody. This is Change in the House of Pods, a podcast about Deftones. My guest today is Bron Daler, singer and drummer of Mastodon. It's been 10 years since the Black Diamond Sky Tour with Alice in Chains, Mastodon, and Deftones. And to this day, it's one of the coolest bills I can imagine. You'll hear Bron describe it as a real bro down, and I believe him. Uh, if you follow either band on social media, you already know they're homies. But what I think is the coolest about this conversation, the thing that really comes through, is the love and respect that Bron's got for the guys in Deftones. And that's just cool shit, you know? Now, this is the last episode of season one, so I want to encourage you uh, like, follow, subscribe. The Change Pod is available on Apple, Google, Spotify, iHeart, Omni, TuneIn. It'll be on SoundCloud soon. On social media, uh, you'll get the most up-to-date and accurate information about the show directly from me. I'm at Woodbra on Instagram and Twitter. You can also reach me and listen to the show on 93x.com. Season two is coming in the spring. I've already recorded a couple of conversations that I'm really excited to share with you, so don't lose me. In fact, uh, reach out, especially if you've got a cool Deftone story. I, I want to hear it. And if you haven't yet, please listen to the amazing conversations I've had throughout season one with people who were there. Like Frank Maddox, creative director at Warner Records, longtime Deftones fan. Still blows my mind. He, as a student, would throw stuff that he made, art he made for Deftones, on stage at their shows to try to get their attention. Unreal. And listen to my conversation with Cyrus King, who, as a teenager, managed to go home with Chino's guitar after Chino threw it into the crowd at the end of a show. Phenomenal story. There have been so many amazing first-hand accounts of magical moments shared on this podcast, I really can't express the depth of my gratitude, both to the tremendous people who have shared their stories here and to you for listening. I love this band. Their music means the world to me. And so these stories mean the world to me. These people mean the world to me. I am extremely grateful. Thank you. Oh, and thanks to those of you who shared your dream set list with me. Uh, we talked about it last week with Zach and Kelly from 30 Nights of Violence. And a bunch of folks contributed on the Deftones subreddit. It was really fun to read them all and think about seeing Deftones in concert again. Uh, a bunch of folks picked some of my favorites off the self-titled stuff like Bloody Cape and Battle Axe. Seems like mostly everybody wants to hear Pink Maggot, which I think is cool for obvious reasons. It's an amazing song. It's maybe been played live once or twice. But honestly... I don't really know how it works in a Deftones set. I think it would be, uh, it would have to be under pretty unique circumstances, like playing White Pony it's in, in its entirety, for instance. Uh, and somebody put uh, these three together, Boys Republic, Death Blow, and Lovers. And every time I think of Boys Republic, I think of uh, the acoustic version from the Live in Hawaii DVD, because uh, I love it so much. But it made me think how cool those three songs would be acoustically, like Death Blow acoustic, Lovers. That would blow my mind. Never going to happen, though. No. Still fun to think about, right? Okay, well, I hope you're ready to learn what the fuck a Creed party is. And apart from how fun and cool Braun is, listen for when I asked him to talk about Abe's drumming. He gives the most heartfelt, thoughtful answer. It's cool, man. This is my conversation with Braun Daler from Mastodon. There's not many other bands that we are as close as we are with the Deftones. Did you know them before you toured together? The Black Diamond Sky Tour was like 10 years ago this month, yeah. which is wild. Did you know them at all before uh, that tour? We had a big night out in 2006 at the uh, MTV Music Awards in, in, uh, in New York City. Uh, there was a Warner's after party. We were there together and then we left together and, you know, it was an all nighter. Uh, <laughs> good times. Great oldies. I don't know. It was a. Uh, yeah, um, I fanboyed out on Abe, I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> um, it was our first time hanging, you know, so uh, it was really fun. But and then throughout the years, we just we had every time we met up, we would be like, oh, my, we got a to tour together. Like, when is this? One? We got to do this. And we still do that, you know, because we we had so much fun on the Black Diamond Sky tour. I mean, the first night before the tour even started, we like like half the, half our band woke up in Frank's hotel room like on the floor you know what i mean <laughs> like in chicago it was like okay this is how it's gonna be all right and that was um, it for a straight month like that huh yeah it was uh definitely doing some damage um because <laughs> i mean we just got on like a house on fire you know we were just like besties right off the bat uh me frank and abe after those guys got done with their set you know we were just uh 
get some some beers and some wine and go up and watch Alice in Chains. You know, I mean, what what better? Uh, the package was so killer, and we were so excited to just go watch Alice in Chains every single night. You know, like one of the best bands of all time, and just their set list was just out of control, and it was just like. And we were playing these big amphitheaters, you know, so we just get go walk around and like talk to people and have our little drinks together and go up to the lawn and and sing. We would sing uh, along to all the songs together, just kind of arm in arm. And it was uh, wow, it was so it was a definite a definite uh, bro down kind of tour. It was really, really fun. And, and still to this day, just one of my my favorite tours that we ever did. I mean, we had we had creed parties every night where because okay so i don't know if you know this but deftones chino they tour with a fucking pa system backstage in their in their dressing room like a full pa that's hooked up to their boom box or whatever and they blast music so loud you cannot hear yourself talk you know and so they will just be blasting creed like arms wide open we all be back there singing along so we just started having creed parties unapologetically not ironically like we were literally just all arms wide open <laughs> i mean i know arms wide open but my own prison doesn't really feel like a party song uh, and I, i'll be honest with you i can't off the top of my head think of the rest of the catalog to be able to constitute an entire party i think we just played arms wide open over and over again <laughs> But there was a lot of Judas Priest and a lot of Bee Gees and just dance parties. You know what I mean? It just was a a real fun vibe. And those guys are just super fun, laid back. And they love to be on tour and they love to to just kind of relax after the show and just have fun, you know. And um, and so do we. Although we don't carry we don't carry a PA system to, uh, (laughs) you know, they're just that shit is so loud, dude. Was it? That's so crazy. I knew that they were blasting. I on a previous episode of, the, of my podcast, I'd I'd heard that they, you know, they would blast music like. But what I heard was like hip hop uh, every night. There's before, a lot. There's, a it, it's all over the place. You know, they're they're into lots of different stuff. It's it's um it's same just just like us. You know, just into into everything. Uh, so, um, but that's the cool thing is is you know, they're such music fans, you know, first and foremost, above anything yeah. else, they want to listen to music that they're, they're into new music. They're into, you know, just sort of get whatever they can get their hands on. That's cool and new and unique and, and fresh. And then the old stuff too, like, you know, it's just, just, it's all about music. You know, it's not, there's, there's nothing else that really matters, you know? So you guys, that's cool. uh, you guys like talk about music when you're, uh, I mean, you're out on the road together, you're working, your job is music. Uh, but do you like, and obviously you party a little bit, but do you, do you ever like engage in conversations about uh, like bond over music in the sense that like, um, you know, it's a lot, there's a lot of like, I think on tour with a lot of bands, there's a lot of, you talk about your show and you'll talk about um, <clears throat> usually what went wrong, <laughs> you know? Word. there'll be a lot of like technical talk about that you know they say oh man my left ear my ear went out and like i was trying to get duder's attention and i couldn't and da, 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 you know there'll be a lot of like uh you, there's a lot of talk of of what what happened during your set that that was displeasing you know or that audience was rad did you see that one dude you know do this or did you see that one person had that sign or did you see this or you know somebody that look crazy you know you talk about some somebody in the audience you know i think the audience is under this uh, misconception that they are not seen by the band but they totally are you know <laughs> uh, people do weird stuff huh people do some weird stuff yeah uh so there's a, it's a lot of talk about there's a lot of uh there's a lot of gear talk you know nerds nerding out about about gear especially with the guitar players and stuff you know they're talking about their rigs and uh some new pedal they got or some this or that or this guitar or this these pickups or you know when you first get on a tour with a band that's that's a lot of like that's kind of what all the icebreakers the icebreakers with every band is going to be their gear and like what they're playing through and what their rig is like and what's going on you know so you sort of of, what are those what are those in-ears or what what sticks you got over there what what are those pedals those are cool what are those beaters those are weird you know 
That's oh, right. Man, let me check those out or, or what's going on. Like, hey man, what's that? What snare is that? What head is that? You know, so everything, you know, so that's the talk usually to get into it yeah, and see if you're compatible. And then, like you said, you geeked out about Abe a little bit. Um, so I would imagine that you guys talked about drumming and not too much, you know, I mean, no? we talk about guys we like, you know, yeah, here and there, but I don't know. It's, it's a lot of jokes. <laughs> yeah. I've it's a lot that. of abstract conversation, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. We have a good, like, uh, back and forth, like having a, a non-conversation basically that can like confuse a, a third party, you know? And so that's a fun thing to do. It's always good to leave someone confused. <laughs> that's, <dope. laughs> that's super funny. Um, but when you said you geeked out about them a little bit, was there something, I mean, so that means you were definitely into their music prior to even like getting to know them. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Actually, I was kind of a naysayer at the beginning. Like when Adrenaline came out, I was like, oh, it's one of these corn bands. Like, you know, yeah. I dismissed them, you know, unfortunately. Uh, I've told them this, you know. Uh, and then I was like really super stoned at my, my guitar player, Eric Burke's house at a party. And it was like the day that Around the Fur had come out. And, it, and it, I was up sitting in his bedroom and it, and it hit. It was like, boom, bah, and bah, nah, bah, nah, bah, nah, bah, nah. And it started, you know, it was really loud. And I was like, what, who is this? And he's like, it's the Deftones. I was like, fuck. <laughs> I've been talking shit about them. I got to take it all back. So that was when I, you know, realized it was the day around the fur came out. That's when I realized that they were a totally different thing and that they had their own thing going on. It was very super cool. And I, and I, I fell in love with it, you know. And then I went through a breakup around that album as, as well. And I kind of used that to get through it. And then, like, I swear, when White Pony came out, I went through another breakup and I used it to get through that as well. So yeah. they, they were there for me for a couple, couple, couple breakups. That's some, uh, that's some heavy stuff. Uh, I have that sense, like, uh, I had a girlfriend who was like, uh, I, like, I can't, I can't listen to this again. It, it just, it's so sad. And I'm like, but the sadness <laughs> brings me joy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. I don't know. Like, you know what? You know, people are always wanting to cheer you up when you're sad. You're like, maybe I want to be sad for a minute. Maybe yeah. there's a reason that I, and, you know, I'm not going to kill myself. I'm just, I'm sad right now. Give me a couple of days. I need to listen to the depth tone. I'm going to sink into it. It's going to be fine. Did you, uh, you obviously, you probably watched a few of their sets while you were out on, uh, on the road together. Anything yeah, I, that, watched like, their, I watched every set. What did you, they watched, what you... The, they watched us and we watched them. That's so cool. That's rad that like reciprocity, that like musical respect and like interest is super cool. Um, yeah, and I mean, as a performer, especially when you start to make better friends with people, you're like, you want to go see them do good. You want to see them have a great show. And you want to know that your that your package tour that you're part of mm -hmm. is killing it from top to bottom. You know what I mean? And like, you're like, we're really giving these people that are showing up for a good show. It's it's happening. Like we're every band is delivering to a, the high expectations. That was a really big time to um, just for all three bands, like the, the albums that you were supporting were, were huge. I mean, they were really important albums from each, uh, from each of you. Was there any like competition at all? Like, cause you guys were, were all doing like, like really awesome stuff at that time. I mean, cracked sky was awesome. And diamond eyes was amazing. Yeah, no, there's not, there wasn't any competition. It wasn't, it's not like that at all. It's not, uh, it's a it was mutual admiration society all the way around i felt like it was very like a very loving environment as far as like the support from each band to from band to band you know we were just we looked at our at ourselves as as the package tour and this entity that's moving through the states and supplying this entertaining um experience for people you know uh we we, we all want each other to do great you know and have a great show and and you're concerned with each other's shows like was it awesome did you did you kill it or i was watching you oh my god you guys are amazing you know so it's it's more like that that's right that's super cool and i would imagine that as a drummer you're probably pretty attentive to what abe's doing so i wonder if you could talk about his drumming for me like talk about maybe what you like about his drumming or what makes him unique um 
from a drummer's perspective? It's, I mean, with Abe, it's just groove, you know, it's very, he can't, he can't not be groovy. You know what I mean? He's just like, he's got it. Whatever that is, it's like, I don't know. He's uh, got a, got a, a unique soul. And so, but, um, but he's also very interesting. He puts it together in a way that's interesting and uh, challenging, you know, uh, so there's this thing that that some drummers are capable of doing that's you know to the layman you don't know that he's doing something difficult because your head is bobbing you know and you don't realize there's something else going on underneath it you know I think Phil Collins was really good at this uh, Stuart Copeland is really good at this and sort of masking this technical aspect that's that's tough there's a polyrhythm going on you know or there's something going on with the hi-hats that's uh uh you know only the the person that has a well-tuned ear is able to hear it but but anybody can get into it because the pulse is still there where um you could create the same thing without all that you know you just play it straight and not be interesting you know and no one would be the wiser but there's something about the fact that he is taking the time to try to do something different and unique, coupled with maintaining that head bobbing, foot tapping beat. Uh, it just makes it perfect and makes him really, uh, makes their band likable to a, a vast ma a va a majority of people, but also endears him to uh musicians you know because they can hear what he's doing you know and they know that it's it took time and it took imagination and skill do you um i, I love that you have brought up both my own summer and uh phil collins uh, because i i saw abe recently um confess that that was my own summer was him uh knocking off phil collins uh easy lover the philip uh, bailey song the yeah. Is, uh, is, is Phil Collins. Uh, I wonder if you've noticed like, uh, cause we, uh, in talking about Abe and his drumming, like we, I've talked about Stuart Copeland, I've heard that name and I've heard Phil Collins a couple of times. Are there other influences that maybe you're, uh, that you're noticing or other things that he's doing that, um, that you, cause I'm, I'm always interested in pursuing the artists that my favorite artists are into. Right. So are there other like directions that, that you can point to uh, with, with respect to that bop and that rhythm and that, that thing that he's doing? I don't know if I can like point to direct people, but I would say maybe a little bit of Stevie wonder and Stevie wonders drumming uh, is in there. Uh, Stevie wonder played on most of his seventies albums, uh, talking book, fulfilling his first finale. Um, uh, music of my mind and inner visions. And if you listen to some of that stuff, you can hear some of there's that grooves always there unquestionably provided by the drums and provided by Stevie's um, playing on the, on the keyboards and the piano. But um, there's also a lot of hidden uh, intricacies and nuance that's there. You know, it's thing I think un unfortunately has been over the years homogenized and watered down by the use of drum machines and things like that. Who, in the early days, were not able to really be programmed in a way that was very interesting. You know, it's sort of made pop music, you know, uh, be that watered down thing. Whereas if you look at the early Genesis stuff and their version of pop music and the version of, of pop music that Stevie Wonder was playing before he discovered drum machines. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on with the drums, especially that has gone. It's kind of gone now from really popular music, which is, you know, whatever. But um, I think if you listen to some of those early uh, Stevie Wonder records, you'll hear some. You'll understand you'll hear what I'm talking about as far as like that constant pulse is there. Right. But yeah. underneath it all, there's all this other stuff going on. There's big we there's weird fills. There's crazy hi hat stuff. There's, uh, you know, so I'd, I'd say Stevie Wonder. That's really rad. I mean, I've listened to Intervisions a bunch. 
yeah for sure um but I, I definitely did not know that he was playing the drums that's really cool i didn't know yeah that'll, that that'll, once you listen back it'll be like holy shit dude is a monster yeah. drummer wow, that's really <laughs> cool that's super yeah. sick um do you have uh well have you had the opportunity to, to listen to uh to ohms their their new album yeah absolutely we i mean i listened to it the I, when the first song came out I, at midnight we were up <laughs> we was blasted played it i don't know five or six times in a row um and yeah i've been listening to it ever, ever since i think it's rad what? i'm so stoked for those guys just to keep on churning out the the gold you know they just keep doing it what um do you have a, do you have a favorite song or a favorite track off of, off of ohms is there anything that's that you're really feeling I don't know. I, it's just like in my truck, so I don't even know the names of the songs. I just, it just rolls, start right? to, it just rolls start to finish. That's cool. I feel like there's a similarity between I your mean, I love band. Genesis. Yeah. 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 It it's uh there's something about getting kicked in the ass right out the gate, uh, with Deftones yeah. who who have that, that capability of going so soft and um, you know, uh, lulling you a little bit uh into thinking. Oh, that you're I know, safe. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I always I'm in like uh I remember like wanting to talk to them so like because I could hear all these influences you know that I, I was curious you know are you guys you like Dead Can Dance or do you like Cocteau Twins or do you like you know all these groups that I was sort of hearing come through you know like I, I bet you anything these guys listen to like Blonde Redhead or I bet you anything they listen to Cocteau Twins I know it you know I can just tell by the guitar and I can tell by Chino's voice you know so uh, did, they do. You ever, have you ever yeah. had that conversation? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. And in their and their B sides record came out with the Cocteau Twins cover. I was like, I knew it. <laughs> um, uh, there there is, I think, some similarity too with Deftones and, and Mastodon, and that you guys are uh, both really, especially uh, with Deftones. I think over the past um, ten years, like crafting albums, like creating full collections of songs, as opposed to uh, just putting songs together. Um, what what motivates that? Like, especially in an era where, you know, now it's, you know, put out a song. Um, why make albums? I, I guess just because we're old or something. I don't know. It's uh, <laughs> maybe comes down to that, like antiquated thinking and, and just just being stubborn, not wanting to let go of that, you know. I th but I I genuinely think that, our fan base more so than not expects that from us, you know, at this point. And, you know, if we were just to turn into one of these bands that just put out a single every couple months or whatever, I don't think that that would be as satisfying for a vast majority of our fans, especially our diehard fans. They want from us what we want to give them, you know, which is what we want to do is have this well-rounded musical experience that lasts about an hour. Right. Is that too much time to ask, <laughs> you know, so totally and i think that the, the, they want that you know what i mean uh they want that that immersive experience they want a story to read along with they want the art to to look at you know that goes along with all the songs and it's kind of you know we hate we don't even like putting out singles you know what i mean like because we, we feel like that's it's uneven you know we're like well you can't hear show yourself without hearing jaguar god it doesn't make any sense you know so um we i guess i mean that's just we're hardwired like that at this point and i don't think that that's gonna change anytime soon that that's what satisfies us is a full-length album experience you know with the uh the past i mean 20 years is, is a long time to be a band um and uh, you sort of mentioned that, you know, just you guys being able to having that rapport and joking around and, and um, just being buds has, has been what kept you. So you did, did you split? I think you did. No, 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 no. I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> no, My don't guitar player is trying to zoom call me. I'm up the house. Oh, word. Oh, okay. I mean, we could probably bring him in, I guess, if you want. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, what do you think, what do you think it is that with Deftones that is, that is maintaining that their success over the years? I think it's one of the, I think it's kind of the same thing. I think it's, I think it's friendship and I think it's a, you know, 
I mean, they're like each other's best friends for since they were kids. You know, they're 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 truly brothers, you know, and they have just been through everything together. And I don't think either any of them, you know, is going to wake up one day and be like, I quit or this is over, you know. Uh, I think that they at the end of the day, they 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 just feel lucky to still be able to make music together, you know. And I think the loss of Chi really brought them together as well, you know, and how how fleeting this all is and how lucky they are to have each other and have the music that they make and to have fans and to have people that care and even want to listen to it, you know. Right. So I think that that's what, and I think, you know, Steph smokes a lot of weed and sits around and plays his fucking guitar all the time. And he's like, so, hey, I got some ideas, you know, and, and, uh, better than that. <laughs> and, 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 and Abe is like, fuck yeah, let's do this. Let's go on tour, you know, let's play some music. And, uh, you know, I think it's the same with us, you know, we're just like at the end of a very long tour when everyone is totally wiped out. It's like, let's take like a year off, you know, it's like, yeah, oh my God, we're beat up, you know. Yeah. been out here for too long and then you get home and you're home for two weeks and then it's like hey you want to jam i got some riffs you know what else are you gonna do that's so awesome that's so awesome um so the way that uh, i've been concluding every conversation on the podcast is uh, with a request for uh three recommendations and this is based on uh, something that um, chino mentioned on a podcast the only reason that he tweets out youtube links to songs he likes is because he feels like that's the best thing that somebody could get from him is uh, for him to put them onto something. So I wonder if you could just make three recommendations for me and this can be music or beyond it can be art. It can be um, fashion. It can be alcohol. I've had podcasts recommended writers, books, whatever you like, old or new, uh, put me onto three, three things. Three things. Um, let's see. You should watch the movie Holy Mountain by Alejandro Yudorowsky. You should listen to the song The Sales of Curran by the band Scorpions. And uh, let's see. You should, you should check out an artist named Skinner because he's my friend and he's amazing and he'll blow your tiny little mind. Where do I find him? <laughs> uh, theartofskinner.com. Awesome. Um, Ron, this is cool as shit, man. It's, it's so awesome um, that you would take the time to just talk about somebody else's band. Um, I, I really, I can't thank you enough for it. It's, there's not, there's not a lot of bands that I would sit and talk about, but uh, Deftones is high on my list and, and, and they're our buddies. So, and they rule. It's really sick. It's so sick. Um, Deftones rule you, and man. other bands drool. Man, I love so many things about that conversation. I don't know where to begin. Oh wait. Yes, I do. Creed parties. Can we just talk about Creed parties for a minute? Because I've given it some thought. There are a couple more jams in their catalog. Higher, for instance. Uh, okay, that's it. I didn't give it. I didn't actually give it much thought. That was a lie. Uh, but <laughs> but that's an amazing story, right? Like them just jamming out to Creed together. So awesome. Thank you, Bron, for sharing those stories with me. Unbelievably cool. Uh, I cherish my Mastodon t-shirts even more now. And if, if you're a big-time Mastodon fan, you're in luck. I have about 15 more minutes I'm going to share with you here. This is actually the first 15 minutes of our chat. We talked about uh, medium rarities, the fucking hilarious promotional videos they did for that. And uh, we talked a little about Fallen Torches. You can actually watch this part of our conversation on YouTube, on the 93X YouTube channel. Uh, but here it is. Are you really? Are you at band practice right now? No, I'm heading there after I get done with this. Oh, rad. That's really cool. Uh, last time, well, in my little bit of research before this, the couple of videos that I've seen of you uh, over the pandemic, you guys have been making music, but I didn't think you guys had actually been together like playing yet. Uh, yeah, for over the last couple of months, we have, I think for about three months there, starting mid-March, like everyone else, we went into a heavy lockdown. So everybody stayed home and uh, didn't we didn't work on any music for a few months. But uh, I can't remember probably around June or so we started to lightly get together. You know, we have our own studio, so we're able to limit, you know, the people that are in there and, and what is going on and just kind of 
there's only a few of us at a time so it's it's pretty safe we think you know yeah. uh and we just the honor system uh you know everybody's just doing their th- thing of course but everybody's wearing masks when they go in public nobody's going to parties or anything and we're just kind of going to the grocery store and your house so i think you know we're pretty you know we're lucky in the in the fact that we don't have to be around a lot of people you know when we're off tour so we are we are indefinitely off tour that's for sure yeah yeah i can relate to a lot of that uh the you know washing your hands all the time obviously the distancing the not going anywhere um, yeah uh, and, and i know you guys uh like created fallen torches for that studio right like that was the first song that you recorded in there to to give it a test drive right yeah that was the uh you know we got drum sounds and it was like yeah the drums sound good uh okay i don't really know what to do with that you know we wanted to have something um just to see what we had you know so uh so we we wrote a song and it's pretty rare for us to just write one song and record it and then move on you know uh the natural way of us would be to you know have all these little little uh seedlings planted you know and and water them each day and nurture them until they're all all ready as an album you know uh so it was it was it was cool uh but we just really didn't know what to do with it we were gonna put it out uh that was the plan ahead of uh because scott kelly sang on it from neurosis um we were doing a tour with him in europe and we were gonna put it out ahead of that tour i don't know what happened uh it just didn't it didn't come out. I wasn't even, I don't think I was told a concrete reason why it just, uh, timing wise, we ran out of time. It was like two, there was like a week left to go on the tour and that song still wasn't out. So it was like, okay, I guess that's not coming out. Uh, so we didn't really know what to do with it. So, um, it was suggested that, you know, it's our 20 year anniversary. We want to put this song out. Um, we have all this kind of shrapnel, uh, fringe songs covers and just weird stuff that got released at some point uh either on a compilation or uh, a record store day exclusive where you know they only make a couple maybe a thousand copies of, of a seven inch so i thought it was a good idea to get all those things together in one place and and uh have a proper release and that way a lot of those those pieces can be uh put on digital streaming platforms and uh you know, all that good stuff. Yeah, I was going to say it's super rad just to have that in one place and to be able to really to listen to it in your car. You know what I mean? It's it's the common currency anymore to to plug in your streaming service or whatever uh, to to have that option now is is sick. Especially on uh, the covers. Um, I'll be honest with you, like I'm I'm not super familiar with Feist. Like I know she was on sesame street like i've watched that with my kids uh right, I, I'm, yeah. I'm not super familiar uh admittedly either with the flaming lips um but man those two songs i really like i i, I instant instantly like got attached to them uh after hearing you do them and wanted to learn more about those artists i wonder if when you do covers like that that aren't like metal covers uh are you are you creating those songs or doing those songs because you just want to do it you just love those songs or because you want to put your fans on to other stuff um <clears throat> well i guess when you're doing covers i'm not going to say that it's boring to do metal covers you know but it sort of doesn't make a ton of sense you know because it unless it's like unless we're asked to do something you know like with the orion cover i mean we love metallica and we but i mean we're sort of in the same realm so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for us to do a Metallica cover because it's going to sound really similar. There's not much that we could do with it that they haven't already, you know, it's in the same ballpark. So it's a lot more interesting, I guess, to, to do something that's, uh, you know, like a Feist cover, which is sort of out of left field for people, uh, for, especially for our fans, but it's not like we're trying to shed light on, I mean, we are in a, in a way trying to say, Hey, this is some other music that we're into. I mean, you know, we're into lots of music. We're into as much as I'm, you know, was raised on heavy stuff and prog and all that. I was raised on a lot of other music as well, like Stevie Wonder and, uh, you know, lots of R&B and funk and, and jazz and 
just everything. You know, my parents were just very well-rounded as far as like the music that they listened to. And so therefore I was listened to. And so, um, and then moving forward, being a musician, uh, if, you know, when you're, when you play music for a living or when you, when, when that's all you care about is playing music, you, you tend to want to experiment with, with everything. You know, you're not just sort of locked in on one genre. If it's good, it's good, you know? So, um, when I'm, when when it comes down to like a, a flaming lips lips cover, we did it because we like that song a lot and we love that record and it's probably one of my favorite records. Uh, it's my favorite record by the Flaming Lips, the Soft Bulletin, and so the drum sound was, on that album because of your song, I I had to go and listen to the album and the drum sound on that album is like insane. It's yeah, it's so crazy. Rad. I mean, those guys are. You know that they're just from another planet and and it, and it and it all works perfectly yeah i love them so unique and cool do you but yeah. um do you uh do you have the i mean obviously um you know what actually before uh, i move out of covers I, I do have to ask you about ozzy too the uh the over the mountain cover you did with two minutes to midnight that was yeah. sick you Thanks. really sounded great like have you sung ozzy before like have you done stuff like uh uh, Ozzy stuff, Black Sabbath stuff. Uh, I've been singing along to Ozzy since I could, since I can remember. You know, um, one of my first true musical loves was uh, was Ozzy and Randy Rhodes. You know, I really was. I don't think I listened to anything else between the ages of eight and eleven or twelve, except the uh, the Ozzy tribute album, the Randy Rhodes tribute album. Um, I know it, but like. Like I know, I mean, I just know that <laughs> that album from start to finish. I know every, I can sing every single guitar solo. I know every single subtle nuance of Ozzy's voice, his inflections. I mean, I'm like, it's a, uh, it's real deep in there. So That's right. doing over the mountain, um, I, I just know that so well. And uh, I know every little dip and, you know, nook and cranny, all the nooks and crannies of that song in particular, Blizzard of Oz and, and uh, Diary of a Madman, those two albums back to back. I just consider them to be one album, you know. Um, but yeah, I lo I, I'm a huge Ozzy fan. And he, you know, his vocal style has just come, you know, even just subconsciously has, has informed everything I do vocally. You know what I mean? There's no way that I can escape it. It's just like the the aesthetics of my vocals, and, you know, the, the, the vowel choices that I make uh the the structures and the way that i lay vocals over a track are pretty ozzy centric i feel like you know um so the opportunity to do that was like i was so excited about it you know to, did they uh, hit you up like how did that happen yeah they did they said uh i had done the alice in chains song with them where i, I did the cantrell vocal and i played sean's drums um and they were they hit me up like hey what do you think about doing over the mountain by Ozzy. And I was like, yes, <laughs> show off my, show off my uh, Ozzy impression, you know? <clears throat> yeah. Not just so, the impression, yeah, but really the full look to do it too. Huh? The full look too. Like you pulled off the full, uh, <laughs> I mean, the, I don't know. The my hair was a, little, was, a little, was a little puffy. Everyone was saying I was like weird Al Yankovic, which I'll take. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was rad. I mean, obviously you guys have been, um, uh, putting your sense of humor out for for a while um so i do want to ask about the promos for medium rarities and uh, uh you guys in the kitchen cooking uh who 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 comes up with that like and, and was it all improv like what how did you guys make that happen i i guess i came up with the basic idea of like i feel like it would be you know they they were saying or, you know, management and the label were like, do you guys want to film some like promo videos for this thing? Like, let's do something, you know, let's not just put it out. Let's, let's do something. You guys are funny. So can you come up with something cool that we could do? So I just thought it would be funny if we were like line cooks in some kind of kitchen and we're in the weeds, you know, and, and we're putting out this horrible food with like broken CDs and, and broken albums and, you know, sweating tickets in the air, you know, the whole deal and the man manager of the restaurant getting pissed off at us. Uh, and so I had that little, that small idea. Oh, and then we finally uh, put our heads together and come up with what is medium rarities. And we have the album like served up looking like a, 
a gourmet, uh, a, a well-plated dish. And uh, so we gave that to our, our, our friends, uh, Numerica, which is like a production company out of Atlanta that um, we work with pretty frequently. They do all like the Orange Amps commercials and they've done some, they've, we've done a bunch of stuff with them where they've, they've filmed it and, and they're really funny as well. So we basically handed them the idea and then they took it and ran with it and made it better and, and funnier. And, and then it was up to us just to kind of, there was no, it was just like, here's some stuff and you have to, you're filming a cooking show and you're presenting your recipe. So that was for each of us, it was whatever we wanted to do. And it was, it was completely unscripted. We just, we just did our thing. It was one take and you know, there you go. They're so, so good. They're so funny. Like, yeah, they came each, out really each, good. Each of your individual ones, I thought even like it all came together. So, and, and the editing is brilliant. Do you have a favorite one? I like Troy's, I think is my favorite. What does he say? It's okay to make, make mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes. Yeah, he was really, really funny. I mean, I think all the guys killed it. You know, they were all really funny. Brent's, I mean, yeah, they were all, yeah, everybody, uh, everybody showed up for that one. There was no like duds, I didn't think. You know, everybody was really funny. I mean, you know, we spend 90% of our time together on the road and in, in each other's company trying to make each other laugh. Like it's just a nonstop. It's kind of annoying to be around the four of us because it's like 20 years of inside jokes that, are just flying over people's heads and we just are so in tune with each other over from being together for 20 years and just constantly trying to uh it's just it's so annoying to be around us it's just very like stop fucking joking <laughs> you know what i mean but we that's just how we are that's how we uh that's how we i guess that's how we've maintained our 20-year relationship you know it's just being funny all the time that's cool as hell so, so uh, you're going to go be funny with the guys in a, in a little bit, go to rehearsal. What are you guys going to rehearse? Uh, we're drilling the new material to, uh, to record uh, in mid, mid-November. We go in for realsies mid-November. And so we are just, just drilling it. Like, you know, for me, it, it's, uh, I, have to, I have to play it. Like I have to play each song like a thousand times, you know, or at least I, I want to, you know, I want to, feel like I exhausted every fill possibility, every rhythmic possibility, you know, leave no stone unturned as far as like the percussive aspects of the music, you know, I mean, uh, so, and there's also discovery in that guitar wise, or, you know, that's not really working or we have to do this, you know, before we get in there with any kind of producer, we want to have, we want to have, poured over it uh tirelessly you know and then when we go to really record it it's like it's just uh, that's that'll be like the easy part you know so because you, like a- we're so prepared you know uh so that's what we're doing we're just we're just going through that stuff at the moment so that's just like a month straight uh, of of working out, out ironing out everything so that you go in ready to to just nail it yeah, and then I'm just physically ready, you know, because I, I mean, I just got done with my my 20 minute workout, and so I just, you know, I never want to be at the bottom of Drum Mountain. And when you're off tour, you're never in the shape that you are dr- drum wise for me, anyways. You're never like two weeks into tour, um, of an hour and a half to almost two hour set is probably the peak physical condition that I'm usually in, you know what I mean? Because I mean, I'm burning through over a thousand calories a show and I'm just like, but it's, it's impossible to maintain that like at home. You think you are in your head. You're like, I'm like sweating like crazy when I get done. Uh, You know, I'm, I'm going for it, going for it. Then you hit the stage and by the end of your third song, if it's your first show back in a while, you're, you feel it, you know, you're, you're dogging it. So as, as intense as you think you're getting, it doesn't really hit that, that high peak performance level until you're in front of people. So it's going to take, I try to make up for it by doing workouts and just trying to be, you know, I'm a 45 year old man, you know? So it's like, I need to be really in shape to be able to play all this stuff and, and, uh, and play it. You know, I don't want to be, behind it you know i want to be on top of it so 
I make sure. Well, that's it for season one of the Change Pod. I want to thank Bron Daler from Mastodon for taking the time to speak with me and David from Warner for making it happen. Actually, I want to take a moment to thank everyone who helped make this podcast a reality. My guests, Brendan Garone from Incendiary, Joe Falkowski, Vezenik from Deftones Live, Cyrus King from This Be The Verse, Chris Enriquez from Spotlights, Frank Maddox, Darren Eggleston, Stephen Vogel, Matt James from Vows, Ralph Torres from Total Meltdown, Jeff Cagle, Zach Wilburn, and uh, Kelly Cook from 30 Nights of Violence, and my bros Pablo and Derek Madden from 93X. I should also thank Chino Moreno, who was my first guest on the very first episode, uh, even though neither of us knew that he would be. Well, I guess I sort of did, but uh, hopefully we can do it again sometime. That'd be cool. I also want to thank Christina madsen Linner, Candice Wheeler, and Bill Schmidt at 93X for their invaluable work. Uh, without them, nobody would know this podcast exists. And finally, thank you for coming on this ride with me. I look forward to uh, picking it back up again in the spring for season two. My name is Woody. You can hear me weeknights on 93X in Minneapolis and Saturday nights at 10 on The Pit, our metal show. Thank you for listening to Deftones, and thank you for listening to Change in the House of Pods.